Hi guys, welcome to Calculus Crush. Today we're going to be looking at the definition of the definite integral. Now to start off with, what I have here is just a uh, arbitrary function, which I'll call f of x. And what we want to try and do is figure out the area underneath this curve between the point A and the point B. So I'm just putting them in whatever spot we want to figure out what this area is all in here. Now in order to do that, we need to use rectangles. So if we just considered there to be one rectangle going from A to B, then the area under the curve would just be uh, the value of the function at B times this distance here. So for example, the area would be F of B. So this height here is F of B times this distance here, which would be B minus A. But we can see obviously that this isn't going to be a very accurate answer. Um, we're overestimating it by a lot. All of this up here is not under the curve. So using a single rectangle is not a good idea. So we'll continue to divide it up this time into four rectangles. And if we look at the area under each one of these rectangles, we can see we're getting closer to the actual area of the curve. We still have a bit of extra, but we're actually missing some on this one. And you can, you can kind of see that as we add more and more rectangles, we're going to get closer and closer to perfectly approximating the area underneath the curve. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use an infinite number of these. So before we do this, we need to figure out an expression for using n number of rectangles. Here we've got four, but let's just imagine that we have n of them. So the area will equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x i times delta x. So where did that come from? Well, this distance in here, this is delta x. Every rectangle has a distance of delta x. And then the height here, that's the height to the function, which is just f of the x value at this location. So we'll call this value x1. This guy here is x2. This is x3. And this is x4. Now that's for the scenario where you have four rectangles, but we're considering we have n rectangles, any number of rectangles. So this can also be known as xi. So what are the expressions for xi and delta x? Well, delta x is the easier one. We know that the distance between b and a is equal to b minus a, and we're dividing that up into n pieces. So this little delta x here is just b minus a divided by n. And xi is equal to, well, let's look at this first one. x1 is equal to a plus delta x. So we start at a, we move over one delta x, and we get x1. x2 equals to a plus two delta x. x3 equals a plus three delta x, etc. So in general, xi equals a plus 
I delta X. Now, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, so we're adding up n of these guys, but I don't want to just add up n, I want to add up an infinite number of them, then we write the final formula as this. Area equals the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n, we're going to add up n of these, but make n go to infinity, of f of x i times delta x. Now just as important in this formula are the expressions for x i, which is a plus i delta x, and delta x, which is b minus a over n. So all of this stuff here is the definition of the area underneath the curve f of x between the points a and b. We define this as the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So this notation here, this guy right here, the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation of i equals 1 to n, we just replace that with an integral sign. And f of x i just becomes f of x, and delta x becomes dx. So instead of writing this, limit as n goes to infinity, sum of i equals 1 to n, over and over, we've developed a new notation, which is the integral sign. That is where the integral sign comes from. So I'll write this out. The limit as n approaches infinity, the sum of i equals 1 to n f of x i delta x. This is defined to mean the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And of course, important on this side is also the knowledge that x i equals a plus i delta x and delta x equals b minus a over n. Otherwise, how would you know that it's from A to B? Right? This A and B are not present on the left-hand side, but they are just through the Xi and the delta X. This is where the integral comes from. The integral is the area underneath the curve. So just as with the derivative, the derivative df of X by dx is equal to the limit as h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. Okay. We kind of define that. Right? This notation, d by dx, is actually the limit as h goes to 0 of this function here. So on the left-hand side, we have the limit definition of the integral and on the right hand side, this is how we like to write it. Just as, uh, well, I've written it opposite here. On the left hand side, we have the limit definition of the derivative. And on the right hand side, that's how we like to write it. We still don't know how the integral and derivative are related. That's not covered here. All we know is how to take the area underneath the curve. We have no information yet that tells us that the area under the curve is actually the antiderivative of the function. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus and it's, we haven't talked about that yet. Right now, all we know is how to take the area underneath a curve using an infinite number of rectangles, which are easy to calculate the area of just base times height or delta x times f of x. We add up an infinite number of those and we get the area under the curve. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time.